So without further ado, I am delighted to invite and welcome Dr. Lisa Durant, who is a Macmillan Consultant Therapeutic Radiographer who works at the Beaton Radiotherapy Centre in Somerset. Lisa is also a member of PRDA's Medical Advisory Panel. You can see a bit of a theme going on here today. Um, but more in case, of, Lisa is absolutely passionate about helping people to understand their radiotherapy treatment and to promote radiographers and to ensure that people thrive beyond their cancer treatment. And she's come along today to share with us her knowledge and insight into what happens at a late effects clinic. So without further ado, thank you and welcome for joining us, Lisa. Hello, my name is Lisa Durrant and I'm a Macmillan Consultant Therapeutic Radiographer and I'm very proud to work at the Beacon Radiotherapy Centre in Taunton. It's a real privilege to be asked to share with you today what happens at a radiotherapy late effects clinic. So I thought I'd start with a view of the patient journey and as an outpatient department radiotherapy doesn't really see the whole of the patient experience, we just see a snapshot of a few weeks. And a lot of healthcare services and service development are based on this snapshot and what we think should happen, but often this isn't re the reality. So for those diagnosed with cancer, they progress on a treatment pathway, onto a follow-up schedule, and then on with their life. But actually, this isn't really what happens. In reality, we know that many patients are diagnosed as like a bomb going off, totally disruptive, Patients progress sometimes rapidly down complicated treatment pathways. You have multiple, multiple appointments. There's complicated terminology and challenging side effects. Some patients do not have face-to-face follow-up but are remotely monitored. And then the final bomb goes off and patients might go on to develop late effects. And please note, return to life now at the end is very distant and all but disappeared. For those that do develop late effects, many struggle to get back into the healthcare system and end up in cycles or spirals of referrals. I expect this will resonate with some of the people attending this conference. For some patients with late effects, they take no action as in the past they may not have been given adequate information to recognise late effects or to understand how to seek help. Others may approach their GP, but actually research by Joe's Cervical Cancer Trust shows that often the whole picture isn't disclosed and patients may seek help for some and not all of their symptoms. GPs often refer back to the oncology team. However, those with late effects do not actually have cancer and the services this team can offer, such as radiotherapy, chemotherapy, surgery, are perhaps not relevant. So patients go back to the GP again. Hopefully you'll get a referral to the gastroenterology team who can manage your radiation enteropathies. But people are more than just a gut and you may need more trips via the GP to get help from urology, lymphedema, pain management, and so on and so on. In the meantime, I'm sure frustration incre increases and the quality of life goes down the drain. History starts to repeat itself, more specifically your history, and many patients vent frustration that they've had to repeat their medical, their medical journey over and over again to different health professionals, perhaps reliving traumatic times making them feel unheard or unlistened to. And we know from Macmillan funded research a few years ago that pelvic radiation disease can result in such severe symptoms that people can become housebound from pain, so social isolation, embarrassing issues such as incontinence, which affects relationships, ability to work and results in a poor quality of life. So clearly something needs to change. So now we come back to the Radiotherapy Late Effects Clinic and the one in Taunton was set up in 2014 by two very insightful therapeutic radiographers, Karen Morgan and Ben Rowe. It's a clinical service based in oncology and it offers symptom management and support to patients following radiotherapy. So late effects are now defined as from three months after treatment completion and I have patients who are now more than 40 years down the line. We cover all anatomical sites and tumour types and usually manage people who are not having active cancer treatment However, patients on perhaps long-term hormone therapies or having localised treatment to other sites other than their pelvis may still have symptoms that we can and should try to help. We prominently see people with pelvic radiation disease. So prostate and gynae cancer patients, which are the blue and the red areas on this pie chart, make up two thirds of the referrals. 
And these referrals still come mainly from cancer services, be that surgeons, oncologists, cancer specialists, nurses. But they also come via the GP, which is a green section, and non-cancer services, which is a purple part. A growing number of people now actually self-refer as all of our patients leaving radiotherapy have information on late effects and how to get back in touch if they have concerns. And this and the GP referrals are sectors that we're really looking to try and improve and grow to prevent the cycles of referrals we saw before. So at an initial consultation, I'm going to take a full history again, I'm afraid. However, with permission, this can then be shared with relevant healthcare professionals. Some histories are hugely complicated Patients can have literally hundreds of letters and annotations on medical systems. You might have moved. They might have changed providers, sought help in many places. Sometimes I'll produce a timeline to try and summarise all these events to share with other teams to try and simplify the process. I may also get patients to complete questionnaires, which are usually barrel or bladder symptoms, so I can start to unpick what's going on and find the best route of action. I may also request suitable investigations, so perhaps a CCAT scan, rather than yet another colonoscopy. And I'll also get permission to access records and reports to try and build a better picture. So for some patients, this becomes a huge piece of detective work, trying to piece together many years of information. At a consultation, I might also be able to share some information back with you. If I have access to your radiotherapy plan, we might try to look to make sense of your late effects. So in these pictures, the radiation dose shows up as colours like a heat map. The red areas are high doses and the blue areas are lower doses. In the picture on the left showing a spine, the radiation beam comes in in the direction of the blue arrow. And as you can see, it travels all the way through the body in one side and out the other. Normal tissues are irradiated and this is a cause of many late effects. The top right picture shows a prostate cancer treatment and we can see how much normal tissue outside the red prostate gets irradiated, in this case the bladder and bowel. And the bottom right picture shows a treatment for a cervical cancer patient and we've pretty much irradiated all of the abdomen down to the bottom of the pelvis, a huge amount of normal tissue. And for some patients seeing this picture can really provide a bit of perspective, understanding that treating a cervix, which in its normal state is only about an inch long, can actually cover a huge area once all the microscopic disease nodes and potential routes of spread are covered and can perhaps explain why people are having so many late symptoms. Once I have as much information as required, the clinics have a stratified approach. For many people, ruling out cancer recurrence is really important as it causes huge anxiety, especially if some of your symptoms of late effects mimic those of the original disease. The first step after this is lifestyle advice. Escalated to the second step of conservative management if simp simple interventions are not helping. And then finally, a referral onto national specialists for complex management. So we're going to look at these in a bit more detail. So managing radiotherapy late effects is a long term challenge. Many effects are permanent and some will progress over time. Therefore, making long term changes is important, but can be incredibly difficult especially for humans whose lives are ruled by routines, we have established patterns, we're driven by things as we want and when we want. So lifestyle advice needs to be simple yet sustainable. Quite often I'll try and review uh, prescribed medications or seek advice to do this. It's estimated that over 2 million people aged 65 and over take at least seven prescribed medications weekly. So it's quite a challenge. As an example, I often see prostate cancer patients prescribed a drug called tamzulosin which we prescribe during their radiotherapy to help them urinate more easily. And many years later, people are still taking it because it hasn't been reviewed. As their prostate's been irradiated, there's arguably little tissue left for this drug to work on, but no one has suggested a trial of not taking it to see if it's doing anything or not. Apart from affecting blood pressure, one of Tamsalo's side effects is listed as causing constipation or diarrhea, which is similar to symptoms of pelvic radiation disease. Simple tips such as sitting on the toilet correctly, types of fluid being drunk, regular pelvic floor exercises and having a toilet map or a radar key can make a huge difference in many patients. About 80% of patients referred with late effects after prostate radiotherapy have gained enough benefit and are happy to be discharged from the service with just simple lifestyle information. 
I also try to look at some of patients' goals and their plans for the future. Sometimes having something to aim for, even if it's something really easy, such as managing a round of golf without worrying about needing the toilet, can make sticking to new routines much, much easier. If symptoms warrant further investigation, then we progress on to level two, conservative management. Importantly, this is management locally, so within your local hospital and services. It appears from patient stories and social media sites that many people spend a lot of time seeking access to services and again entering cycles of referrals. And arguably, seeking access to services and making those connections is probably our role and not the role of the patient. And therefore, we spent a lot of time in Taunton looking at where patients are referred to and building pathways and clinics. So with a comprehensive history, I can ensure your case is discussed with the correct teams and you can get suitable tests and treatment. So as an example, this would be pain and recurrent urinary tract inf infections that require cystoscopy to diagnose radiation cystitis prior to installations to reline the bladder. So in this really busy diagram, the patient is in yellow and the patient is the expert. They have the information. And with the late effects radiographer, you can then have access to a whole host of relevant services, such as urology nurses, dietitians, physios, urogyne teams. And then you can be discussed at the appropriate multidisciplinary meetings to make sure you get the correct treatment. Expanding on this, we now run several joint clinics where the patient can see several experts at once. So rather than many trips to individual services, we can share goals and priorities and learning. So in the joint lymphedema clinic, there's physio input, lymphedema specialists and late effects, and we can all take quite a holistic view. Finally, for patients with severe late effects requiring very specialised services, potentially surgery, we can ensure everything is in place for referral to national services. For example, to access the pain related cancer late effects functional rehab service in Bath, it's required that patients have been through a late effects or a pain management service before referral. So with a more, uh, a more holistic patient centred view, we're also mindful that some people may require other support. So late effects can cause problems with some of the simple activities of daily living. So for example, if you have sacral insufficiency fractures, they can be painful and prevent almost all activity. And for those living alone or requiring help, the late effects service has really benefited greatly from Somerset's network of village agents and micro providers, and these offer local practical help and support. We also tap into social prescribing, such as exercise referrals, which can help with motivation and self-management for long-term conditions such as late effects. So I'm not sure how many of you listening and participating today have had absolutely first class care from a wide variety of healthcare professionals. I'm sure it's quite a few of you. Patients with late effects are seen by nurses, clinicians, dietitians, experts in bone health, experts in sexual wellbeing, physios and so on. So why do we need therapeutic radiographers? And let's face it, perhaps we're some of the people that have caused a lot of these late effects in the first place. I'm hoping this cartoon will help clarify why there is a central role for radiotherapy led clinics. So the stick person on the left with a red dot, it signifies a person having pelvic radiotherapy. Now in many centres we're very inactive on our management for late effects of these patients and over years symptoms appear, quality of life decreases. And this is when patients report I haven't left the house and nobody told me about afterwards. In the second row the model is slightly more reactive but again, it's not until the burden of symptoms is high and the quality of life is poor that a healthcare professional steps in to help. And the healthcare professional here is anyone with expertise, so maybe a nurse, a dietitian, a clinician. The last panel shows a much more proactive approach to late effects care. And in this case, this is a therapeutic radiographer. And by supporting people from the start of their radiotherapy journey, we can have much more influence in perhaps predicting late effects so patients can make informed choices about their treatment, identifying late effects earlier, which in some cases such as lymphedema can really improve outcomes, and by advocating for patients early in the pathway, we may be able to prevent some late effects. So the only way to not have late effects is not to irradiate normal tissue, and as radiographers we can help to drive this by feeding back on outcomes from our patients and to help drive improvements in planning and technique. At this point, it'd be useful to point out 
what doesn't happen at a late effects clinic. And actually I'm not able to see patients out of the area and this is because there's not enough capacity in the system to refer patients into local services. So for instance if I see a patient from Cornwall I wouldn't be able to request a cystoscopy in Somerset as I don't have the links to request them in Cornwall and follow it up either. So however changes are happening behind the scenes. So in 2019 a new service specification came out in England which defines how radiotherapy should be delivered. And in this document it states, it is the responsibility of all the radiotherapy providers to prevent and minimise late effects. The vast amount of people that develop late effects should be managed locally. Local specialities to manage more common late effects and specialist services for complex late effects. So at last, late effects has become a proper issue. And if we look at a map of radiotherapy centres across the UK, then perhaps we can start to imagine how it would look if each centre had that service that people could easily access for symptom management and support locally. So our late effects clinics aim to work alongside patients in the point of referral for radiotherapy treatment. As much as possible, we try to provide proactive symptom support and access services to patients to help them thrive as well as survive. So finally, it's over to you. So radiotherapy late effects services are now starting to develop and it's your chance to tell us what you want and what we're missing. So please do let us know what you think. Your voice will help us drive this to be a truly patient-centred service. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, Lisa. I think Lisa's going to join us now. We've got quite a few questions, so we will... Try our best, Lisa, to get to as many of them as possible, but there's some really okay. good ones. So um, <laughs> we will, we'll go over them. And I'm going to make an apology now if I say anything the wrong way, because I'm not a clinician. So my my uh, my phrases might not be quite right. So Cathy has asked, can scans diagnose bowel damage? I have only been offered colonoscopies. Uh, that's very interesting. And I think there's some work going on to look at that at the moment. So quite often, um, I see scans for patients and they say there's fibrosis, but there isn't there isn't a measure or there isn't there isn't any way we can we can use that subjectively. So at the moment I'd say no, we don't we don't diagnose some scans, it's just from, from colonoscopies. Hopefully that will change though. Thank you. Uh, another one, very good one. Lisa, do you feel informed consent should be gained after radiotherapy planning has been undertaken so patients are informed as much as possible about what late effects they may experience as to what has been eradicated, eradicated? Sorry. That's, um, that's very interesting because normally we get informed consent before any of the process starts. So perhaps we should look at it again and say to people, these are the potential outcomes is this what you still want to go ahead with? The, the informed consent process is actually changing to include a lot more information about late effects. So hopefully it is improving, but actually after planning, I think could be a really valid point to do it again, to actually look through the plan with the patient so they have a good idea of what to expect. Mm, yeah, yeah, because I, I would imagine when you're in that first initial stage of diagnosis, it's probably not something that's, that's necessarily at the forefront of your mind to even think about, let alone ask. And consent's a dynamic process, isn't it? So yeah. um, people's views can change, can't they? Mm, definitely, yeah. Um, how soon after radiotherapy finishes should patients be seeking help? And this is a question we hear a lot of. I've heard of people being told by their oncologists that things will settle down in time and people think that in time could mean years. It's a, it's a complicated issue because after radiotherapy, there's quite a high burden of acute side effects that do then get better before late side effects start to appear. If you have concerns though, I think they should be addressed immediately because the sooner we act, the better the outcomes. So if you have got things you're not sure about or they don't seem to be settling down, then do seek help. And actually the guidance has changed. So it used to be late effects, used to be anything from six months onwards and that has changed quite recently to three months and onwards. So it should be a whole continuum of care really. Thank you. And I think this is probably our last question. Uh, is a conservative management team available to patients discharged 12 years ago? 
I'm in London being referred to separate consultants for each piece of my anatomy. It's difficult to say, I'm afraid, because it's it, as we as we've seen before from from Rebecca's talk, it's different across the whole of the country, um, and for some people, they will have to go for separate consultations for each thing. Hopefully, that will change in the future, though. Thank you. Oh, we did have one final question. I will ask you. You may not be able to answer. Is there any late effects services in Northern Ireland that you are aware of? That we're not. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but hopefully through the Society of Radiographers uh, Special Interest Group for Late Effects, we might be able to find out. I'll see what I can track down. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you ever so much for joining Thank us you. today and, and sharing your insight into what happens at a Late Effects Clinic. We're, we're very, very thankful. Thank you. Thanks, then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.